my name's Al Ackerman and welcome to my channel. If you like card magic, make sure you click on subscribe. Now today I'm going to be doing one of the classics of card magic. It's called Everywhere and Nowhere. It's an old officer plot, comes from the 1800s. Now the version I'm going to do today comes from my new lecture notes, Card Theater. I called it almost like Everywhere and Nowhere. It's totally impromptu. Let's take a look. Hey, this effect is about a dream I had the other night. And I was in this imaginary poker game, and I had this imaginary four of a kind. And I'm going to let you pick the four of a kind that I have. I don't want it to be a court card. I would like it to be one of the number cards. So let's say uh, the spectator names a card. They name the threes. So let's check and remove our four threes from this deck. There's exactly four of them. No others, no more, no less. All right, so just these four guys right uh, here. And I'm going to have you name uh, one of the uh, suits from the uh, threes. So you go clubs, hearts, spades, or diamonds. So let's say the spectator names the diamonds. All right, the other threes uh, are not important. They're just going to sit in the background. Now, four cards do not make a poker hand. Four, four threes, four of a kind, it's not a poker hand. We have to have a fifth card. So I'm going to let you uh, pick our fifth card. And I tell you what, since the card you named was red, three of diamonds, uh, why don't you name one of the black cards uh, that you see here in the group? So let's say the spectator names that eight of spades, eight of spades, right there. So two cards named, eight of spades, three of diamonds, and then our other threes need the rest of the deck, just these five cards. Now, like I mentioned before, these five cards cannot exist in the real world, and I'll explain why. Uh, we'll start with this three of diamonds, and then in a moment, we'll come back to that uh, eight of spades. So watch the three of diamonds. The weird thing on this poker hand is I put a card on the bottom of the hand, it still remained on the top. Here, let's try that again, because that is somewhat strange. If I took that three of diamonds, and you can see me place them right there on the bottom, the three of diamonds still remains the top card of the group. Now, let's think about this for a second. If I uh, put the three of diamonds on the bottom, and we happen to know the three of diamonds is also on the top, that implies I have more than one, and that is correct. Our third card is the three of diamonds, our second card in the group is also the Three of Diamonds, and we already know the top card of the group happens to be the Three of Diamonds. Now, I'm not going to do an effect with the top Three of Diamonds, nor am I going to be using the second Three of Diamonds. This effect is going to be done with the third, this third Three of Diamonds. Now, four Three of Diamonds is a stupid poker hand. You could get shot with a hand like this. So let's do something really useful with that Three of Diamonds. Just a snap of the fingers, we're going to turn it into a Ten of Spades, and the other threes we're going to turn into a Jack of Spades, Queen of Spades, and a King of Spades. Hey, that's beginning to look like a Royal Flush. You know that Eight of Spades you selected? Much better off being an Ace of Spades, and we really do now have five cards that are a royal flush. Now this gives rise to a really interesting question. Actually, two questions. What happened to the two selected cards? Well, the three of diamonds went to my front shirt pocket, and is empty. That eight of spades, well, he jumped over here to my other pocket, and that's the story of my imaginary poker hand. Hey, if you like card magic, make sure you click on subscribe. If you like this effect, give it a thumbs up. Now, the year was 2015. I was up in Seattle, Washington. My work used to send me to a Microsoft convention up there every year. And in the evening, I would often get together with some of the local magicians for a card session. Anyway, this year I was uh, at a session with Steve Hobbs and Jack Carpenter, and I did my small packet all backs routine from the Cardman book, which I have up here on YouTube. And he said, Al, there's some good magic there, but I don't like the routine because you're giving away the concept of a double backer, one of the tools that we use. He says, I don't like anniversary waltz either because it gives away the concept of a double facer. So I went home to my room that night and worked out this routine, and I published it last year, and that set of notes. 
So I hope you enjoyed the effect. My name's Al Ackerman, and I'll catch you next time.